Hey up everybody and welcome to this video. First of all I just want to say thank you for the massive amount of support the series has been getting again. Um, it's great to see everyone kind of engaging with it and talk about their ideas to get involved with um, very British Civil War and also uh, following people's blogs and stuff that they posted about actually getting into the game. Uh, so I'm happy that I've been able to inspire a little bit and help you along the way. Also um, the series that helped me get to 500 subs which um, was kind of my target for the end of the year but here we are in, uh, what, what are we in, like July now or something, so uh, I'm pretty chuffed with that. Cheers, cheers everyone for uh, coming along for the ride and I'll definitely do a dedicated video at some point uh, and a competition as well, but for now, cheers, appreciate it. Um, anyway, today's video is going to be the last of those that are loyal to the government um, and at least these guys aren't open fascists, it's the Royalists, so uh, the supporters of King Edward VIII himself and his person, members of the King's Party, um, looking to defend common decency and good old British values. Um, so today we're going to be talking about two approaches you can take with the Royalists. The first is going to be the highly elite remnants of the British Army uh, manifesting itself in the Northern Army. If you're a proper Northern lad and you, you want to be fighting on the proper side of the border. Um, and also the Army of the Seven Valley if you're one of those Southerners. Um, don't associate with you, but if you listen in, I guess you could be tolerated for today. Um, and the second approach is going to be kind of Dad's Army type um, local defense, defense volunteers or LDV militia. Um, the models that are going to be using this are going to be very kind of like interchangeable with other factions. So you're going to be hearing um, a lot of these figures I'm going to recommend over the course of the next few videos. Um, but I'm definitely going to put in a little bit of a royalist twist in there, you know, make it flavorful towards um, obviously supporting the king himself. So without a um, waffle out of the way. Let's go straight into it, the stuff you're here for, and we'll talk about the British Army. Right, so this approach is going to actually be quite similar to building a early war British Army for bolt action. Um, and if you wanted to make it specifically for um, VBCW, you could add on some white armbands with green stuff. Uh, but of course, if you want to keep it um, kind of interchangeable, uh, keeping them plain, completely fine, goes all the way. And then you can um, get more bang for your buck, I guess. Um, also as well, if you do have uh, some kind of like spare uh, capital sitting around or something, um, you could buy the Empress in the War British range, which is an absolutely beautiful range, they're all lovely figures, uh, much better sculpt than Warlords actually, which will be going off mainly. And it represents the army kind of going through that process of modernising, which was begun in 1936, and obviously with the Civil War that probably would have been quite interrupted, so you'll see a lot of mixture of equipment between the First World War and the Second World War in this kind of range, um, and in the, in the armies of um, in the British Army at this time. So getting this kind of Empress range would be much more accurate, but of course it kind of costs a little bit more as well, you're missing out on a few of the deals, uh, so it's a bit of a trade-off, um, So and of course that is up to you, um, and you could maybe use a few of them for um, a few sections here and there, um, but the f purposes of this guide we're going to keep it simple, we're just going to stick with Warlord, just because it's a bit, a bit cheaper, and it's also a bit better supported as well. Um, so your first purchase is going to be the uh, British Expeditionary Force deal by Warlord. It gives you um, two officers, I think, uh, one section and all the support teams you need. So that's a mortar, an anti-tank gun and a Vickers machine gun as well. Uh, this is all for £29.50, which is saving you about a fiver, I think. So not that bad a deal. Uh, that's just to make it a full kind of platoon there to round it off. You're going to get two more sections of the BEF for 30 quid uh, for two of them, uh, which gives you the full infantry platoon with all the trimmings as well. And of course, as well, just to round it off, you are going to gonna, you are gonna want a bit of armour as well. So we're going to put a tank in there. As last time, there's a lot of options out there. And um, we're going to stick with the Vickers Medium 2 uh, just because it was the main British battle tank of the interwar. Um, and of course, it's quite cheap as well. So, again, it's always got that going for it. Uh, but you could throw something different in there. You could put in a Vickers Light if you want a bit more of a recce kind of force. Um, or you could be a massive prick and put in a Matilda 1 or 2. Um, you won't make many mates, uh, but they'll certainly teach people not to mess with the armoured might of the British Army. Obviously being quite heavy kind of tanks for the period. Um, so you could throw them in there, but again, you're not going to make too many pals. Uh, I'm still going to recommend sticking with the Vickers Medium 2 though. Again, just because it's cheap and it's the, the quintessentialness of that British interwar design. All those straight lines um, and no curves. We absolutely love it. 
Um, finally, um, artillery is available to the British Army, unlike the fascists. Um, so here I'm going to recommend you get the 25 pounder howitzer uh, from Warlord. It's a perfect kind of light artillery piece. Once again, it's the backbone of the army and it allows you to, to rain death from above upon those that would dare rebel against the government. Um, overall, this is going to give you quite an effective kind of force. It's going to strike fear into any would-be rebel. Um, and of course, you can bolster this as well with some like universal carriers or some trucks or um, anything else that you want to transport your troops around in. But it would be, this is the perfect force all on its own. Um, and it should do you about £92.50. Um, so a pretty good solid force there for under 100 quid is what I'm trying to stick with. Um, and Warlord does also do a great painting guide for this as well. Um, I've had people asking me for painting recommendations and I'm not the best painter out there, out there but I will do a, a dedicated painting video towards the end of the series just for those that, um, that want a bit more in depth. So I'll go over the kind of civilian painting schemes and the, and the, the uniforms, that kind of thing. Um, but just be patient with me please because um, again I, I've never actually done a painting guide before so I'll have to pick up some new techniques but I will get around to that. Anyway, uh, that's the approach there, gives you a pretty solid army, um, and we'll go on to the next one. So, for this second approach, you're getting into the kind of bread and butter and the fun of a, of a very brutal civil war. It's going to be the average kind of civilian who's just trying to find their way through what is quite a hard time in Britain. Um, and for whatever reason, be it uh, for fighting for king and country, or uh, because they've been forced to by the local lord, um, these lads we're going to be talking about are thrown their weight behind the playboy king and um and all those kind of sensibilities so to start with we're going to go to our good friends at Futsaw, and um, we want a kind of variety with this force we don't want uniforms anymore we want people wearing their own clothes and a bit of uh, a bit of character to it so for starters we're going to um, we're going to get our officers it's going to be the british militia character pack um, which also includes a sergeant and an lmg to form a section around um, and to complete the section we're going to want two of the militia packs um, which gives us quite a nice kind of rural unit they're all wearing their suits they're wearing their jumpers um, and they've all got the Brodie helmet on as well so it, it's quintessentially British and that's what we like to see um, you can also like mix it up because you're, you're gonna have two of each figure in this section you can really mix it up quite easily just by painting different patterns or different suit colors and really make them look unique for the second section, we're going for the God-fearing middle-class kind of vibe. Uh, so we're going to want the bank manager figure with his top hat and his shotgun, along with two packs of city workers just to reflect the kind of bank clerks and the sensible folk um, who have come along to fight for Edward. Um, and to complete that, as well as the next section, uh, we want the Bertie and Butler set, which will give us an LMG for the, the bank chaps and also a character for Lord figure to reflect any kind of local inbred of your choice. Um, so I'd have a very high opinion of the nobility, but it is what it is. Um, and for our final section, um, we're going to go for a kind of Lord's hunting party. So the chaps on the hunt uh, from, uh, so that, that's, well, that's the name of the pack actually, the, the chaps on the hunt from Woodbine Designs um, and also the poachers pack as well. It gives us eight kind of hunting figures um, and you can throw in uh, Bertie there as well to make a crack kind of group of, um, uh, um, uh, well, of riflemen. Uh, well trained at hunting so obviously we're quite good at putting down rebellions as well and it also gives you a really kind of fun painting challenge to do tweed so you can really put the time into it and make them look beautiful um, and of course you could also add in as well the sloppy jalopies armed cr cricketers in, in place of one of these sections which is just a very very British Civil War unit um, you know they, they say that very British Civil War is like cricket with guns so why not take it literally with a cricket team with guns so you want the team set for this it gives you a full section um, and it will look perfect on the tabletop everyone will love it um, so that gives you your main infantry so the three sections there pick three from the four I've just given you and you'll have a really nice royalist force um, just to add that little bit of character as well throw in the foot saw fla uh, militia flagman uh, to get the colors flying be it the royal standard or the livery of some local lord again you can really theme this around your local area if you're in britain if you're not in britain pick an area stick with it um, look up some kind of lo noble that um, sounds cool and um, stick with that and make it unique um, support teams are quite lacking in terms of figures sadly um, but we, we do have some options to get around that the first is the Foot Saws, uh Boys Anti-Tank Gun, which is an obvious choice. It fits in with your militia from the first section. Um, 
and of course gives you that anti-tank capability which can be quite lacking um, but for a machine gun there's no actually fixed machine gun teams um, that really kind of fit in with this force um, but we do have a mobile machine gun team so we're going to get the Croydon Crusher from Empress which is the obvious choice for any very British Civil War player I think everyone should have it I mean just look at it it's a um, you know a four-wheeled machine gun of a guy with some goggles on and it just looks incredible it's perfect so we're going to throw that in as well um, just because why not uh, a mortar team again sadly quite lacking um, so we're going to have to go to the Empress's range of uh, Spanish Civil War for this is going to be the mortar one set they're a little bit continental in kind of look you can mix and match there's one with a helmet and a bare head so maybe use them um, but if you really want to use the the continental hat maybe one of them really enjoyed traveling and wanted to go for a bit more of a European flair in his look um, or maybe we just don't have suitable figures yet but either way you'll have to do and it gets you more on the table as well you need that kind of uh, support there finally we want some kind of armored unit as well tanks might not be appropriate for such a kind of ragtag rural militia force of local gentlemen uh, but we can add in an improvised armored car which would uh, which always works wonders with these kind of armies I'm going to recommend the Empress's um, half track conversion or the armored lorry pictured there in the in the very British Civil War section um, you can pick the the half track if you want more machine guns in your army or the um, the, the lorry if you want more anti-tank um, it just gives you a kind of quirky uh, little vehicle there which um, adds a bit more character to it so with all that together it should give you a, a very fun and characterful little force uh, to represent Middle England and uh, it should round off at about 104 quid or 106 quid depending on if you went for the hunters or the cricketers you could of course do both if you're really feeling it and I think that'll give you quite, um, a, a much more fun look but sticking to the bare minimum and ideally the cheapest um, we'll go for the 104 quid mark with the uh, with the hunters um, which again that, that gives you a solid force uh, should be able to face off against anyone it sees Finally, we're going to be talking about some centerpieces um, for your army. Uh, this is where we talk about the big characters in the faction and also uh, the big vehicles and their, their time to shine. Um, the first figure we're going to be talking about is actually King Edward VIII himself, um, if you can actually get your hands on him. He pops up on eBay every now and then. He was, he was an, actually an, um, an event exclusive miniature. Um, but yeah, he, he pops up on eBay uh, quite often. He can sometimes go for a fair bit, but if you, if you wait out and you... You persevere you might get lucky and be able to get in quite cheap um, I actually got him for eight quid I think off eBay but I know someone's selling it right now for about 20 or something so um, if you're desperate for him um, you can pay the pennies for it um, but it is a really nice figure and obviously again same with Mosley in the last episode um, you can have those kind of assassinate the leader um, kind of scenarios he comes with a Tommy gun as well which um, so it means he's actually quite effective on the table as well he isn't just going to be sitting around um, the next figure is Lord, I can't, I can't say this, but is it Siren Chester? I think. Um, anyway, a fascinating figure in the background who is actually leading the army of the Seven Valley. He was, I believe it's 27th in line to the throne, but because with the Civil War going on, a lot of the people that turned against Edward were, um, let's say, excommunicated in a way. They were sent off away from the line of succession so he's really bumped up in the list and he, he, he offers that kind of sinister Richard the Third kind of vibe he's he's working with Edward but he's definitely conniving and scheming behind uh, behind closed doors to seize the throne for himself um, what more Empress make a beautiful figure for him based off the great Ian McKellen film Richard the Third which was um, a massive basis for the setting um, so if you really want to kind of uh, bring the wars of the roses up to a much more of a um, a recent um, you know a much more kind of modern incarnation of the wars of the roses he's a great choice there uh, to get those kind of dynastic squabbles in and stuff um, and also just to paint up as well finally we want that big tank we always want the big tanks so uh, you know something to draw the eye and some heavy fire as well uh, so for this i'm going to point you towards empress again uh, for the vickers mark III tank or the vickers independent if you're really feeling a bit frisky there um, the independent was actually uh, i think there's only one was ever actually made of them so you might have to be doing some mental gymnastics there to justify why you why you've got that only one. Uh, but if you're running the army of the Seven Valley, uh, you know the main royalist army in the south, yeah, you might be able to justify it. 
but the Vickers Mark III, much more, well, they're not loads of them, but they're, there's a few more than the Independent anyway. Anyway, these are multi-turreted beasts, they're huge, and they just look really quirky, scary, blocky on the tabletop, and will make a, uh, an, an excellent um, centerpiece for your army. So with that said, that's the end of this guide. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. We've finished the, the government now. We're, we've done away with it, uh, with this lot. We can get to the much more objectively fun factions. And next, uh, the next time is going to be the People's Armies, my personal love in the hobby. Um, and of course, I'm going to keep my biases to a little bit of a minimum there. Um, but anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please do let me know any suggestions as well. I've really enjoyed your comments coming in about uh, recommendations. Um, so I'm, I am going to do a painting video at some point. It's not going to be now. It'll be uh, some point in the near future. Uh, give it a few weeks and I'll try to get on that. Um, and see where that goes. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please let me know what you thought of it. And I will catch you in the next one. Bye guys.